Good morning. Praise be to God that he has allowed us the privilege to be together one more time. God is just good. God is kind. God is merciful to each and every one of us. He's allowed us to make it through another week. I know some of us uh, have been in some car wrecks this week. Some of us have had to go through some things this week. Um, some of us are still dealing with uh, job issues and uh, family issues and, and, and food issues as well. But even in the midst of all of this, God is still good. Uh, my uh, prayer this morning is for all the mothers throughout the land and the country. God bless you for the work and the service that you have given. Happy Mother's Day to you. I, I know that it, it, it's one of those things that you're not really used to of having to deal with what we're dealing with right now. But even in the midst of this pandemic, it's still Mother's Day. But to me, Mother's Day is every day. I just want you to know how much you are appreciated, how much you are loved and how much you are thought of, amen? Uh, as again, I, I, uh, my heart goes to uh, uh, the nursing homes, uh, to the jails, to the prisons, uh, to, to those who are confined and, and cannot get out or whatsoever, uh, who are at home, uh, we're, we're lifting you up and we're praying for you. Uh, we also wanna be praying for those who are just not dealing well with this mentally. Because there are some people that are just really stressed out over what is happening and what is going on. And, and uh, uh, I, 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 I hear you. I hear you. Uh, you're trying to make ends meet. You're trying to take care of your children. Uh, you're still dealing with sickness. You're still dealing with heartache and pain. But God is able. And he's going to see us through. Pray with me. Father. We just want to say thank you. Father, we don't want to complain. We just want to say thank you. Thank you that in spite of us, you're still in the blessing business. We, we're not worthy, Lord. But even though we're not worthy, you still shine down upon us. Father, we appreciate you. And we just magnify and we bless your name. Now, Father, as, as we prepare to go in uh, to our worship experience, we just pray right now that you would bless those that have dealt with so much this week, that they have gone through so many ups and so many downs. But Father, I know that it seems like every morning when they get up, they're trying to figure out how in the world that they're going to make it. But Father, let them remember that you're still in control and you're still in charge. And Father, you're still making a way for each and every one of us. Lord, we pray for your deliverance in every situation. Father, I pray for those who are uh, in our health care industry. Father, I thank you for their uh, unselfish sacrifice that they make each and every time they go in to care for others. Lord, we realize that they're taking their lives, uh, and they're, they're, they're putting their lives at risk. But Lord, we know that you keep a covering over them. Father, bless those of us who are still working, uh, who are still out here toiling and laboring. Give us the strength. And Lord, bless our children as well. Lord, some of them are hurting. They're just dealing with the issues of life at their young age. Lord, let them know that everything can and will be all right. Lord, that you're still in control and you're still in charge. And we will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Father, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Whatever I fail in asking, Master, I pray you won't fail in granting. In Jesus' name, amen. Many of you all know to, today is Second Sunday. And because it is Second Sunday, we always celebrate our communion service on Second Sunday. We ask you now, if you would, to join in with us as we celebrate and we partake of our communion. I asked you to just go and find something to drink, go and find a piece of bread, go and find something that we may be able to share together, and we may be able to go through our communion. Uh, the word says to do this in remembrance, 
And even though we may be in isolation, we're still, we still have insulation. He has still kept us. He has still provided for us. And he is still walking with us on a daily basis. As you all remember, the Passover feast was at hand. And Jesus told Peter and John to go into Jerusalem. And there they would find a man carrying a water pot. And they said, follow that man. And when he gets to his location, follow him inside. And then tell the owner that the teacher has need of a room to celebrate the Passover. And there you will find a room ready for us to meet there. Strange point. The room was ready. But Peter and John still had to do the preparation. I, I want you to know this morning that, 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 that the church building is ready. But each and every one of us have to do our own preparation each and every day. You have to prepare yourself in the morning. You, you have to start out with prayer and, and, and Bible reading. You, you have to prepare yourself every day to receive Jesus into your life and into your heart. You, 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 you have to make preparation on a daily basis. This means that we've got to trust him throughout the day. We've got to ask for the Holy Spirit to go before us, to guide and to keep us, to keep watch over us, not just us, but our loved ones as well. And if you're a real Christian, you'll ask him to bless your enemies as well. This is preparation that we must do and we must have on a daily basis, just as Peter and John prepared. Let us also be mindful and prepare daily when they met in that upper room, as they were all seated, Jesus passed the cup first. And then after he did so, he, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body. My body, which was given for you. And he handed it to them. And he told them to eat. Likewise, we will do the same thing. But before we do it, let us give a word of prayer and blessing over this over this bread and over this cup. Father, thank you for your body and for your blood. Father, we realize daily that we're not worthy to take of this. Only that we ask of you first to uh, uh, that we repent of our sins, that we be cleansed in this moment, that we would be found worthy to, to, to receive you and that you would get the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. After he had blessed, they took the bread, he, he gave it to his disciples, and they ate. After they had eaten, before they left, he, he took the cloth, and he said, this represents my blood which will be shed for you on Calvary. His blood. Not our blood. Not the blood of animals. Because you see, the problem was the blood of animals just didn't get it. Only the blood of our Savior Jesus was good enough to wash away our sins so that we would not have to do this time and time again, ever again. But this is it. Let us now drink together. When they finished, they left and went out for a Mount of Olives. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go to, but the, the guys are going to bring a song right now. I ask you to listen and to pay, play close attention to this song because it meant a lot to me when I heard it and I pray that it will also mean a lot to you and that you will be blessed by the words as they give them to you. 
starting at verse 21, Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 21. Now, uh, for some of you all, I want you to understand and comprehend that um, because we are in isolation and, and separation, uh, we, we're not able to collaborate a whole lot on uh, the music and the message. Uh, we allow God to do that. And when I got here today, I listened to what they were singing and I said, okay, they're singing my message. This is not a coincidence. This is just the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost working in our lives. And I want you all to understand that as we go into this message. This message uh, may ruffle your feathers some. And I hope it does. Because I want you to understand the importance and the significance 
of a church and a church body. I want you to understand the importance and the significance of us all coming together as one, of us serving and working together, and how important that is in our lives. Hebrews 21, chapter 10, and it says, And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him, for our guilty conscience have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. And our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us hold firmly to the hope we claim to have. Uh, the one who promised is faithful. Let us consider how we can stir up one another to love. Let us help one another to do good works. Let us not give up meeting together. Some are in the habit of doing this. Instead, let us cheer each other up with words of hope. Let us do it all the more as you see the day coming when Christ will return. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these words. We thank you for the music. We thank you for those who participate, who, who, who are willing to do what they do. Lord, we pray right now for the message that it will bless someone, that someone will receive something from it. But most of all, we pray that you'll get all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and sisters, this morning, I just want to speak to you for just a few moments, and I want you to understand that we are celebrating Mother's Day, and you're probably asking, okay, uh, Charles, where's the Mother's Day message? Well, I got one for you, but it may not be the way you want it. You see, Mother's Day, as I was, I was sitting and reflecting and praying, we've already celebrated Christmas. We've already celebrated Easter. Uh, and now Mother's Day, you see, that's this time that, that most of our Christian orphans, our spiritual orphans, uh, children of God with no family relationship, usually meander and make their way to church. And, 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 and some of you all are saying, well, he's trying to talk about people. No, I'm not. I'm just giving it to you just like it came to me. Uh, so some choose to be foster children. Uh, in, in other words, they go from one house to another, and, and they never really settle on where they're at and what they're supposed to be doing because they, they, they don't have a real home. They're just going from house to house. They don't put down any roots. And I, I've got news for you. Even though you may have moved from wherever uh, to this community or to the community that you're in, it don't take five years for you to find a church. It just don't take that long. None of them are perfect, and guess what? You ain't either. And so since none of us are perfect, we learn to work together. We learn to share together. And we, we, we learn to be what God would have us to be. We all know that babies grow best in families. When, when there are children in the world who have been orphaned or who are not part of a suitable family, we want to get them in good families. In other words, Here's where all of us need to be playing a part. We need to be out here searching, praying, and giving out wisdom and, 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 and giving out uh, a desire that folks would come to Christ, that they would come to the church, and that kids would not be out here, church children, would not be out here on their own wandering from one place to another. Because we understand that children grow best connected. In other words, you need to be connected to somebody. You need to be connected to somebody. You call yourself a Christian, it's hard to be a Christian standing all by yourself. You need to have a connection. Somebody that can actually pour into you. Somebody that's going to hold you accountable. Uh, somebody that's going to say, okay, then you know what you did. It's okay. Uh, understand something. Attendance is simply, a, it, 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 it's just attachment. Attendance is just attachment 
Church membership is attachment accompanied by fellowship. In other words, we're fellows and we're all on the same ship. We're all going through and we're all dealing uh, with one thing or another. All of us have to deal with issues at one time or another in our lives and in our existence. But when we have fellowship, we have other people that, that connect us and bring us together. That's why it's not good for you to be an orphan. That's why it's not good for you to be on your own. It, 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 it's good for you to be connected to someone else. You know, and, and, and okay, maybe you still aren't getting where I'm going with this. But I've got news for you this morning. If you get in your car and you take off and you, you, you start to drive somewhere in your car, the one thing that you have to make sure and very sure of is that you have gas in the car. So in order for you to have gas in the car, Every now and then, I don't care, some of y'all have got them new cars, and that, 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 those hybrids and this, that, and the other, but even with a hybrid, you got to plug it up every now and then. That's right. You have to stop at a filling station in order to refill your car. As Christians, we learn that in order for us to carry on God's work and do God's will, every now and then, we've got to stop and get filled back up. In other words, we have to have a filling station for us in order for us to, to keep going on. Because if we don't, we'll run out of gas. We'll run out of gas and, 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 and we will be let down. And because of that, we have to make sure and very sure that we stop and get filled up. Uh, now, for many of you all, I'm going to go here. Because, see, some of us remember the days before we had cell phones and things of that nature. I never shall forget one night I forgot to get some gas. And as young men do, I was out a lot later than I should have been. And all the doors were closed and locked on people's homes. And all the dogs were out. And it wasn't that I was scared of the dogs, but I was scared of the guns that the neighbors might have. And you don't go knocking on some people's doors at one, two o'clock in the morning. So me and a buddy of mine who was not real happy about the situation, we walked home. It was cold, it was sleepy. And I learned then to never run out of gas again. Lessons. Old people can teach you. See, now a lot of folks wouldn't even go through the point of saying that to you because they wouldn't want you laughing in their face. But I'm here to tell you, you don't need to run out of gas. You don't need to run out of gas in your car, and you don't need to run out of gas in your spirituality. And because there is a church close by you, you need to go and get refilled. If you are watching this uh, uh, this morning, you need to make sure that you watch it all the way through, that you can get the feeling that you need, that the Spirit of God can come into you, can refill you, that can boost you up. And some of y'all need to put some octane additive in. In other words, you need to read your Bible. If you read the Bible and add the word with it, you get the octane additive. And the octane additive will boost your spirit to a higher level. Amen. Some of us, and I hate to say this, but we spend too much time in immaturity. I told you you weren't going to like it. But it's all right. You see, immature Christians withdraw from the fellowship of other Christians. We know we're on the road to immaturity when we don't feel as if church matters much anymore. That I can do this on my own. We don't have to go to church to become Christians, but attending church is necessary for us to grow spiritually. You can't do it by yourself. I, I, 
I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I, I hate to break it down to you like this, but you need a fellowship. Attending a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching fellowship will inspire and motivate us in the direction of maturity. What, what, what am I trying to say? A mature Christian will want only to be blessed, but also to be a blessing to others. In, in other words, it's not about us. A mature Christian wants to, yeah, we want to be blessed. We do, but we also want to bless those that are around us. You see, it's not so much that we can eat, but we want to make sure that those around us can eat. We want to make sure that they are taken care of. We want to make sure that all is well with them uh, because we have a spirit down on the inside that says it's not about us, but it's about Jesus and serving him. Jesus, it, it, we, we just did communion. Jesus could have easily have turned and said, I'm not going to go through this. I'm not going to go to the cross. I'm not going to deal with the beatings. I'm not going to be spit on. I'm not going to have a crown of thorns on my head. But Jesus said, it's not about me. You prepared this body for me, Father, and because you prepared this body for me, the only thing I can do is go and serve you. You have been put in spiritual preparation as a mature Christian to go out and do the work and the will of God. It's not for you to set up and selfishly keep it to yourself, but it's for you to go out and be able to share it with those around you. Too many of us get in that process or in that point in our life that, that we don't understand the, the spiritual connection. You see, God's hands are your hands. Your hands are connected to your wrist. Your wrist is connected to your elbow. Your, uh, your elbow is connected to your shoulders. It all works hand in hand. So it takes all of us moving, motivated, and working in order to do the work of God. We can't do it. The hands can't do it by the same. So some of us are hands. Some of us are wrists. Some of us are elbows. Some of us are shoulders. And because we all have a job to do, the body is in pain when we don't do it. In other words, let, let me go here with you. Have y'all ever built a fire on the outside and you're out camping out or you're out or roasting uh, s'mores and, and, and hot dogs and you notice that you, you, you don't put one log on the fire. You lump the logs together. You crisscross them and you, you put them there. Then you put some charcoal light on it and they start to burn. And as they start to burn, because they are all connected together, the flames start to continue to go up and they get bigger and bigger. Now, now, now the problem is if you take one of the logs and move it out of the fire, the fire still burns, but it doesn't burn as bright. And the log that you remove, if you're not careful eventually, it will smolder and it will go out. Too many of us have let our fire go out because we have disconnected ourselves from the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Oh, I know you're saved. I know your soul is on its way to glory, but there's something that you have to understand and remember. You still got an answer for what you do. You, you, you may be a Christian, but you still got to go before the judgment seat. Amen. You still got to be able to tell uh, them what you did in your body. It, it, it's not about the fact that you just saved. Yeah, yeah, you got a home in glory. But you know, there's an old song that says, I shall wear a crown. Uh, some of us are going to have a crown, but ain't going to be no stars. We ain't done a thing since we got saved. Except go in the wrong direction. Let, 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 let me say it like this. There was a fellow who went to church one time and decided he wasn't going to go back no more. So they had a new preacher and, 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 and they, they told, the congregation told him, said, preacher, he ain't going to come to church. 
the preacher said, well, I'm going to go try. You know, when you're a new preacher, you just want to try folks. You just want to see what you can do. You think that you can conquer the world. I know I've been there. I'm old now, so I know better. But he went to the man's house, spoke to the man. The man let him in. He, 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 he sat him down, and he said, to, he said, I just want to talk to you about coming to church. And the man said, I'm not going back to church. He said, well, what is the problem with you in church? He said, every time I go, they throwing things at me. And the preacher sat there and he scratched his head and he said, can you elaborate on that and explain to me what you're talking about? He said, well, when I was a baby, I, I, they took me to church and, 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 and they threw water on me. He said, okay, okay, I got that. He said, when I got married, I went to church, and as soon as we come out of the church, they threw rice on me. And he said, I ain't going back no more. And the young preacher looked at him, and he said, well, you may not go back right now, but you're going back one more time, and guess what? They're going to throw dirt on you then. You've got to understand something. It's not just about going one time when you're a baby. It's not just about going when you get married. And it's just not about going when you have a funeral. Christian walk, Christian talk, and Christian living is an everyday thing. That's why it's, it's just not important to show up at Christmas. It's not, it's, not, it's not that you've done a great thing by showing up at Easter. It's not that you've just blessed your mama by showing up on Mother's Day. You need to bless people on a regular basis by showing up at church and then doing the walk that you're supposed to do. Amen. This is what it's all about. We, 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 we don't have the right as Christians to sit still and act like God has not planted something down on the inside of these jars of clay. There is a treasure on the inside of us that we must let it out on a regular basis. You see, you ought to get so filled up. You ought to be, uh, uh, you ought to stop and think about all that God has done for you, how he has blessed you, how he has kept you. And as soon as you start thinking about it, you ought to start thanking him. And then you ought to start telling someone else about what he has done, how he has blessed you, and how he has kept you. You want to see God show up in your life then show up at the church and let your walk and your talk come together as one. Understand something. We are not here for nothing. We have purpose. Everybody can't be up at the same time. Even Christians get depressed. We get upset. We get hurt. But I want to say to you this morning, this passage says to stir it up in us. Stir it up. Encourage each other in the Lord. You see, as, as, as you are having a good day and someone else is not having a good day, it's not your job to just say, and, 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 and there's nothing wrong with praying for folks, but you ought to be able to give them an encouraging word. You've got to be there to help stimulate their growth. What, what am I saying? I wondered sometimes why I had to go through some of the things that I've had to go through in my life. But I've come to realize and understand that I had to go through those things so that I could be a blessing to someone else. In other words, I'm able to tell them I made it. And because I made it, you'll make it. Because you'll make it, you need to tell somebody else how that you went through it and that they can make it through it too. You, you, whatever the situation may be, whatever you may be dealing with, whatever may be going on right now, it may seem like it's hard and you cannot bear it alone. Guess what? You're not. If you are a child of God, there's another child of God right there. Willing, able, and, and, and if they don't do nothing else, I, I, I never shall forget uh, a man lost his wife, and a friend of his came to the visitation. And the friend sat down beside the man and never said a mumbling word all evening. 
after the ceremonies were over. And a few days later, he saw the man. And the man said, I want to thank you for being there. I want to thank you for what you did. And he said, I didn't do anything. I just sit there. He said, that's right. But you stayed with me. You were there and you listened to me. You were there and you comforted, comforted me with your silence. You don't, sometimes folks, we let our mouth overrun us. Sometimes you just need to sit there and listen. Some people just need somebody to hear their situation. And as Christians, we're always trying to, to give a scripture here and a scripture there. Sometimes it ain't about how many scriptures you give. Sometimes it's about just shutting your mouth and just sitting there and listening. People need somebody to hear their situation. Sometimes just being a good listener is the best thing you can ever do. Today, I ask you, instead of being an orphan Christian, Instead of being a foster home Christian, instead of being an immature Christian, why don't you come to the fellowship and become mature in Jesus? Are we all where we need to be? No. Many of us still fall short on a daily basis. But guess what? You do too. But you know, I, I find encouragement and inspiration because I know that Jesus had 12 disciples and one of them plotted to kill him. The rest of them all had issues. Now if Jesus can deal with the issues of his disciples, we can deal with the issues of each other. We can work together. We can love one another and we can keep the faith going. Our job is to witness and tell others that are lost, that are out here in this dying world, that today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised. As we look at the end of this scripture, on, on verse 25, we, we, we say that, you know, he says that the day is at hand of, of the coming, of the situation. Now, now, now some scholars will say that that. This wasn't the coming of Christ, but this was the, the coming of, of, of the tearing down of the temple in Jerusalem. Some scholars would say that it doesn't mean either one, but it may be the end of your day. I, I'm here to tell you, all you've got is right now. Tomorrow is not promised. All you have is today. Why won't you give your life to Christ? Let him rule in your life. Then fellowship yourself together with baptized believers in Jesus who want to work with you, who want to, to, to share with you, who want to cry with you, who want to laugh with you, who want to be there when you are standing in need. I'm so glad that God placed me here because we, we, we love the call to arms. When somebody's in need, there we go. Amen. I thank God for working a church that's willing, that doesn't mind serving, but we still need more. In other words, what am I trying to say? We want you here. We want you working. We want you serving. We want you to be a part of the fellowship. It's up to you. You need to trust God. And when some of us don't do what you think we ought to do, you don't have to get on the phone and tell everybody. Just tell Jesus. He'll straighten us out. He straightened me out many a day. You don't have to get upset and leave. Just tell Jesus. He'll convict us. And he'll put us right back on the path that he needs us on. Because, you see, we all need to be about the Father's business. We don't need to be setting still. If you, if, 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 if you just don't understand or comprehend where we're coming from, at the bottom of this screen and, and on our page, uh, there's a prayer line. There's a line there. If you have questions, call us. We're willing to talk with you and to pray with you. 
Some of you just need somebody to talk to. And we want you to know that we're here for you. And we want you to be all that God is calling you to be. Now, church membership is a blessing. And you should cherish it. Join us just as we have joined Christ. You all know that Christ gave his life for us on Calvary. That we all might have a right to eternal life. He hung, bled, and died. They laid him in a bar tomb. Three, late, three days later, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He was seen by over 500 believers after his resurrection. And then he ascended back to heaven to prepare a place for us. I'm on my way home. I like it. This world's not mine. I'm only here temporarily. I'm on a temporary visa. I am an alien in this country. But while I'm here, I'm going to work. I'm going to serve until he calls me home. And then I'm going to sleep. And he'll wake me up in glory. God bless you today. Heaven smile upon you. Again, we're here for you if you need us in any way, shape, form, or fashion. For those of you who struggle, for those of you who are going through, I, I just want to sing this verse and I'm going to let you go. It is when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior has come. Be not dismayed when men don't believe you. He'll understand and say, well, When I've come to the end of my journey, we read of life and the battle is church service, of supporting the work of the church. Help us to be about your business. Help us to live for you daily. Now, Lord, those that are sick, Lord, we pray healing. Those that are lost, we pray that they'll come to know you. Lord, those that are lonely, let them know that the fellowship is there for them. Father, that they must draw closer to you and that if they draw closer to you, you'll draw closer to them. Now, bless us throughout this next week. Give us the strength that we need. Be our guide in all that we say and do. And these, your people, will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Lord, whatever I fail in asking, I pray you won't fail in granting. We submit this prayer to your heavenly throne, to the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And every heart said, Amen. Amen. Amen.